Good Friday is a difficult part of our faith. It is a day of shadows and death, a day when it seems like the sun will never shine bright enough or warm enough again. It is a day of pain and sorrow, a day when hope dies, when the world seems withered and barren. It is a hard story to tell, but we will tell it. We will hear it and feel it and share it, for it is our story. It is our hope and our salvation. Selections from the Gospel of Mark, chapters 14 and 15. It was now two days before the festival of Passover and unleavened bread. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for ways, a way to arrest Jesus secretly and put him to death. We must not do it during the festival, they said, or the people might riot. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went off to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. They were pleased to hear what he had to say and promised to give him money. So Judas started looking for a chance, good chance to hand Jesus over to them. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve disciples. While they were at the table eating, Jesus said, I tell you that one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. The disciples were upset and began to ask him, one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, do you? Jesus answered, It will be one of you, twelve, one who dips his bread in the dish with me. Jesus said to them, All of you will run away and leave me, for the scripture says, 
God will kill the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised to life, I will go to Galilee ahead of you. Peter answered, I will never leave you, even though all the rest do. Jesus said to Peter, I tell you that before the rooster crows two times tonight, you will say three times that you do not know me. Peter answered even more strongly, I will never say that, even if I have to die with you. And all the other disciples said the same thing. God, how have we wounded you? What is there within us that has caused you pain? How have we wounded the people and creatures that you love, causing pain and suffering to your very creation? With petty thoughts and selfish actions, we deny your goodness and focus on our needs. The anxiety of our lives betrays our faith in you. Be near us, O God of mercy, as we consider the harm we have done through our own denials and betrayals. Following his final meal with his disciples, Jesus was together with them in the garden. Jesus was still speaking when Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs and sent by the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. The traitor had given the crowd a signal. The man I kiss is the one you want. Arrest him and take him away under guard. 
As soon as Judas arrived, he went up to Jesus and said, Teacher, and kissed him. So they arrested Jesus and held him tight. Then Jesus was taken to the high priest's house where all the chief priests, the elders, and the teachers of the law were gathering. Peter followed from a distance and went into the courtyard of the high priest's house. There he sat down with the guards, keeping himself warm by the fire. The chief priests and the whole council tried to find some evidence against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they could not find any. Many witnesses told lies against Jesus, but their stories did not agree. They put Jesus in chains, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, So you say. Pilate spoke again to the crowd, What then do you want me to do with the one you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. But what crime has he committed, Pilate asked. They shouted all the louder, Crucify him. Pilate wanted to please the crowd, so he set Barabbas free for them. Then he had Jesus whipped and handed him over to be crucified. Oh, sacred head, now wounded With grief and shame weighed down Now scornfully surrounded With thorns I only crown took Jesus inside to the courtyard of the governor's palace 
and called together the rest of the company. They put a purple robe on Jesus, made a crown out of thorny branches, and put it on his head. Then they began to salute him, Long live the King of the Jews! They beat him over the head with a stick, spat on him, fell on their knees, and bowed down to him. When they had finished making fun of him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. On the way, they met a man called Simon, who was coming into the city from the country, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. Simon was from Cyrene and was the father of Alexander and Rufus. They took Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they tried to give him wine mixed with a drug called myrrh, but Jesus would not drink it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes among themselves, throwing dice to see who would get which piece of clothing. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The notice of the accusation against him said, the king of the Jews. They also crucified two bandits with Jesus, one on his right and the other on his left. People passing by shook their heads and hurled insults at Jesus. Aha, you were going to tear down the temple and build it back up in three days. Now come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law made fun of Jesus, saying to one another, he saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let us see the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. And the two who were crucified with Jesus insulted him also. At noon, the whole country was covered with darkness, which lasted for three hours. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, a loud shout, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why did you abandon me? Some of the people there heard him and said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. One of them ran up with a sponge, soaked it in cheap wine, and put it on the end of a stick. Then he held it up to Jesus' lips and said, Wait, let us see if Elijah is coming to bring him down from the cross. With a loud cry, Jesus died. The te curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. The army officer who was standing there in front of the cross saw how Jesus had died. This man was really the Son of God, he said. Some women were there, looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James, and of Joseph, and Salome. They had followed Jesus while he was in Galilee and had helped him. Many other women who had come to Jerusalem with him were there also. It was toward evening when Joseph of Arimathea arrived. He was a respected member of the council who was waiting for the coming of the kingdom of God. It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath, 
So Joseph went boldly into the presence of Pilate and asked him for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that Jesus was already dead. He called the army officer and asked him if Jesus had been dead a long time. After hearing the officer's report, Pilate told Joseph that he could have the body. Joseph bought a linen sheet, took the body down, wrapped it in the sheet, and placed it in a tomb which had been dug out of solid rock. Then he rolled a large stone across the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, were watching and saw where the body of Jesus was placed. When we are unkind to each other, the world becomes a darker place. Jesus taught us to love each other. When we want everything for ourselves, the world becomes a darker place. Jesus taught us to share with others. When we scare or bully others, the world becomes a darker place. Jesus taught us that love is better than fear. When we are jealous of others, the world becomes a darker place. Jesus taught us contentment. When we lie, the world becomes a darker place. Jesus taught us honesty People's hatred, greed, selfishness, jealousy, and dishonesty placed Jesus on the cross. For Jesus' friends, the world seemed a dark place. In the darkness, Jesus said, O oh God, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. In a world of both immense beauty and horrific suffering, we have taken these holy moments to open our hearts to the journey of Jesus, to journey with him to the cross, and to journey in solidarity with all who suffer and grieve. As we journey with Jesus, we remember all those who plotted against him, all those who betrayed him, who shared the Passover with him, who denied him, who prayed with him, who arrested him. We remember those who beat and mocked him, who abandoned him, who left him alone to die. As we go into the growing shadows of this evening, into the silent unknowing of Holy Saturday. May we carry in our hearts the crucified Christ, along with all those places and peoples that continue to be crucified, shattered, or destroyed today. May our hearts open tenderly, like a waiting womb or a tender tomb, and in the sheltered silence, may we cradle all that is wounded and all that is broken, all that is touched by evil and violence, until, until, until we feel the quickening pulse of new life begin to stir.
for God is not done with us yet. Are you there?